Florida quarterback Kyle Trask is one of the most intriguing QB prospects in this upcoming NFL draft. Aside from Gators fans, not many people knew about his potential as an accurate, down-the-field thrower. But the 2021 Heisman candidate put up big numbers in a tough SEC conference. When I heard that he was putting up more touchdowns than Joe Burrow in his historic season through the first seven games, I knew that I had to take a look at his football caliber. Hello everybody, I'm Anish Gupta and welcome back to the Cold Hard Truth podcast bringing you the Cold Hard Truth on all things football. Before we get started, I wanted to thank you guys for 500 subscribers. Seriously, we can't thank you enough for all the support. We recently did a giveaway on our Instagram, giving away a CHT hoodie and t-shirt. So please, please go enter. It only takes a couple seconds of your time, completely free. And again, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Again, only takes a couple seconds of your time. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Here are my thoughts on Florida quarterback Kyle Trask. Now, when watching his film, I would say Kyle Trask's biggest strength is his overall accuracy and ball placement. He puts the ball in an optimal location for a clean reception. For example, against Ole Miss, he threw multiple balls that were absolutely on the money. Now, here on this play, he rolls to his right and delivers a perfect strike to where no one else but the receiver can get it. Now, there was another play to star tight end Kyle Pitts. Trask places it perfectly to the left, away from the DB, which results in a touchdown. Now, another one of Trask's biggest abilities is his ability to float the football on jump balls. Now, quarterbacks like Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, and even Justin Herbert are key with this. They're able to high point the football to where only their big receiver can catch it. This throw against Georgia perfectly shows it. Trask takes a normal drop back and throws a back shoulder fade to Trevon Grimes. Now he recognizes that the DB isn't looking and he places it perfectly above his head so that when Grimes turns, he is the only one able to make a play on the football. Now there was another beautiful throw to Kyle Pitts. He recognizes the mismatch and is able to put it only to where Pitts can get it. Now this is a huge asset to have, especially in today's NFL. The red zone offense is a pivotal part of an NFL game and the ability to throw it in tight windows, especially along the sidelines, is a huge key for any NFL quarterback. Now one knock on Kyle Trask when watching his film is his inconsistency with his arm. He tends to throw the ball with different velocities on certain throws and it leads to forced throws and unnecessary incompletions. Towards the end of the game, this throw on second and nine against Georgia it was a decent read, but he didn't put enough air on the ball, which allowed the DB to almost intercept it. Also on fourth and four, Trask throws it a bit too fast and high, whereas he should have thrown it as soon as the receiver makes a step forward. Now that allows the receiver to make a juke or a quick spin to maybe get that first down. Now looking at his film, I was actually pleasantly surprised. His accuracy and decision-making are among the best in this 2021 draft class, and his football touch is very underrated. Now, moving on to stats, in Trask's first year as a starter, he totaled 2941 yards, 25 touchdowns, and just seven interceptions on a 66.9 completion percentage. He finished with 11-2 record and an Orange Bowl victory. Now, the stats obviously weren't imp impressive, but it was his first time regularly starting games in his collegiate career. But he took a huge jump this year. 4,200 yards, 4,283 to be precise, 43 touchdowns, eight interceptions to go along with three rushing touchdowns. Now that earned him recognition as a 2021 Heisman candidate, and he finished with an eight and four record, but here's the problem. Trask did end his career with a woeful loss to Oklahoma. He totaled 16 for 28, 158 yards, and three interceptions. Now without Kyle Pitts, Trask looked flustered at times and forced the ball to his receivers. Now this caused me to have questions about going to a team without consistent weapons. I don't know if he can develop wide receivers. Now I thought I would compare Kyle Trask to someone in the NFL and my biggest NFL comparison would be Vikings quarterback Kirk Cousins. Now Kyle Trask's game is predicated off play action and he's not as mobile as you would want him to be but when he needs to be, he can get you that eight to 10 yard scramble. Similarly, Kirk Cousins plays that way. I mean, he's very lethal off play action. In fact, some of the highlights I'll show you, it's just him rolling out bootlegs, able to find receivers, you know, 10 to 20 yards down the field. He can be mobile when he needs to, and he throws the ball in windows to where only his receiver can get it and the DB can make a play on it. Now, based on my takes on Kyle Trask, I expect him to be a late first rounder, early second round pick. Now, there are many teams that could be interested in him, especially playoff contenders that are thinking of a quarterback switch 
I'm thinking of the Los Angeles Rams right now. Now, Jared Goff and Sean McVay are butting heads, and I don't know Jared Goff's future right now. Same with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Big Ben is obviously, his questions are up in the air. And Dwayne Haskins, I don't know if he's the answer either. Now, with Kyle Trask, he can also be a redshirt for a year. We've seen quarterbacks like, obviously, Patrick Mahomes redshirt for a year and then really take off. So there are multiple teams that can do that. But also another fit I would see is the Houston Texans. Deshaun Watson is obviously out the window. And I think Kyle Trask, with a good left tackle and some solid receivers in Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, and Kiki QT, I think Kyle Trask could develop a solid NFL career there. So here are my final thoughts on Kyle Trask. Let me know what you guys think. Was there anything I missed? Was there anything that I should have talked about? Please leave a comment. I'm really interested to see your guys' thoughts. I love doing these videos. I love interacting with you guys. So please leave a comment down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been Anish Gupta from the Cold Heart Truth Podcast, and we will see you next time.